So we're here in southern Portugal along the Algarve. This is one of the most impressive sites in the area. We're just at the entrance now, we're just about to head in to go and investigate the Alcala megalithic monuments, which is basically a large cairn with like a chamber in it with some megalithic um, stonework there as well. So uh, said to date to at least sort of 5000 BC. Um, it's, one, it's quite a unique site in the area. Uh, I'm going to be heading up north to the Evora area, which is sort of more central Portugal, where the much larger dolmens and stone circles are and other sites like that. But this is very similar to what we've seen before in southern Spain and along the Iberian Peninsula. So let's go and check it out. So we're here at monument number seven and you can just see there's a couple of very large limestone blocks kind of just hanging about outside it and I think these were used to create the walls or lintels inside the chamber. You can just see this not dissimilar to the kind of stone you might find at Avebury and over there as well. Even a Stonehenge and some of the monuments up in central Portugal as well. So we're just going to head in, we can kind of walk over the top of the chamber and actually uh, have a look inside hopefully to see um, what is left in the crypt. I don't know if you can see that down there. It looks very neatly cut, these quite large pieces of stone that are curved, or whether this was done later during the reconstruction, I'm really not sure. But you can see it's like a sort of dry walling. It looks like they put kind of mortar in it nowadays. You can just see down there a quite a large stone that's almost like some kind of shelf. And there's one above it which is like a lintel. So we must question what that's all about. If you look on the ground down there, you can clearly see a huge megalithic block making up the whole floor. And so this is obviously part of a major megalithic accomplishment here in southern Portugal. So this is one of the massive limestone blocks probably made up the walls or the lintels or the roof blocks within the chamber it's obviously been reconstructed probably damaged completely and destroyed and there's another one just over here as well you can just see examples of megalithic masonry as part of this greater monument So behind me here, you can really see the size of one of these megalithic lintels that were used as part of the construction of this kind of can or this burial chamber. Set to date to probably, you know, 5,000 years ago. It's quite a remarkable piece of engineering. So we've got the sort of core board or dry stone walling and you have the megalithic construction as well. Um, it makes me wonder what this was really used for, whether there were actually any bodies found in it or whether it could have been some energetic site possibly used to charge up seeds as we are finding with many other sites around the world. It's very different to the other sites up in Avora, uh, around in sort of more central Portugal, which are much more megalithic and they have less of the dry stone walling, um, but remarkable nonetheless. And we're gonna try and squeeze through this small gap, this entrance to the main chamber here to see if we can get 
any sense of what was going on. It does seem like it's made up of a whole series of megalithic lintels going all the way into the back of the chamber. Now to me, this is very similar to the chambers we find around New England in New York State and other places where you have the megalithic blocks making up the ceiling and sometimes the side walls. But also you have the corbelled or the dry stone walling making up the main bulk of the chamber. So we see a very similar design. We wonder why this design seems to be used at different places around the world. This reminds me actually of some of the sites in Malta possibly in Sardinia and Sicily and other places where this kind of limestone rock which has kind of got a holy look to it uh, with lots of little gaps uh, a bit like a sponge is combined with there's relatively large blocks going along the bottom of this particular tomb area and also the very large megalithic blocks linking in with the very small blocks which is more like uh, basic dry stone walling um, but yeah it does remind me of other sites I've seen in Spain Malta um, and even Italy as well. Now officially this large hole in the ground which has been cut from the bedrock with this stone walling around it is actually a 19th century uh, kiln uh, which was actually used for fire and to cook food and to make pottery and things like this. So somehow they built it by cutting the rock out of the solid ground. And it's pretty hard, kind of, uh, it looks like sandstone here. So um, it would have been quite a job if it was done then, unless it was actually something earlier, built in prehistoric times and reused by the later cultures, which is what we get in many different places uh, around the world. Behind me, it's quite an interesting little thing we just discovered here. It's like, uh, I think it's probably being constructed by the archaeologists or the curators uh, of this site. And it shows you a large block and with ropes and kind of wooden logs and stuff and that, you know, showing how they would have potentially moved the stone, which is probably how they did do it here. Um, but this doesn't really explain how they did it in other places, which we'll see later on in other parts of Portugal, where the stones are probably upwards of 100 tonnes. Uh, that would obviously just crush any logs or any wooden pieces, or even probably destroy the ropes as well that were pulling them along. But here, it's just a fascinating little example, and uh, it's quite nice that they put it here, really. So this is how they did it. Let's have a go. Oh, even a strapping lad like me can't do this. Okay, budget. 